<laughs> okay. We're going to focus on the digestive system, but we'll see what else I can point to as we go through this. Uh, up here, this is actually not the digestive system, but this is actually part of the larynx, the voice box. This upper portion right here is called the thyroid cartilage of the larynx, and right below it, the cricoid cartilage of the larynx. Uh, right, attached to the cricoid cartilage of the larynx is the trachea, the windpipe. Now, <clears throat> right behind, posterior, behind the trachea, this is the esophagus, the muscular food tube, and it's a flat muscular structure that uses peristaltic contractions to push the food down to the stomach. <clears throat> if we go down here, this is the to get our orientation, this is the liver. That's the large organ of the, in the upper right quadrant of the abdomen. And this is the stomach, the large organ in the upper left quadrant of the uh, abdomen. And so here we can see, kind of, this is the esophagus right in here. the esophagus right here and it's connecting up with the stomach which kind of has the shape of a letter J if you use your imagination. Right where the esophagus meets the stomach there is a sphincter, a valve on the inside we can only know that it's on the inside called the ga uh, uh, <laughs> gastroesophageal sphincter the older name was the cardiac sphincter and it controls, not very effectively, the uh, uh, movement of chyme between uh, the esophagus and the stomach. The upper part of the stomach is called the fundus, the middle part the body, the lower part the pylorus. Here you can see where the pylorus of the stomach unites with the duodenum of the small intestine. There is a sphincter right about here called the pyloric sphincter or pyloric valve that controls the flow of chyme between the stomach and the duodenum. <clears throat> the duodenum is kind of shaped like a letter C. In this case, a lot of the material has been pulled away, but right in here you can actually see the pancreas. The pancreas would, as a soft tissue, it's not well defined, it has the consistency that looks like brown cottage cheese. It's found right here in the C-shaped curvature of the duodenum, right below the stomach. On this cat, if you want to pause or okay, all we'll, we'll, right. This is a different cat. Here's the esophagus connecting up with the J-shaped stomach, and coming off the stomach is the duodenum. And this actually shows pretty clearly the pancreas in situ. It hasn't been removed. The pancreas, again, the consistency of kind of a brownish cottage cheese is found right here in the C-shaped curvature of the duodenum and right on the underside of the stomach. All of this is pancreatic tissue. It's a diffuse organ. It's not well defined. It's not like a liver or a heart. It's just kind of loose. And uh, you can see the texture of it is soft. And the more I kind of strip off the membranes, the more it starts to look like cottage cheese, very fine cottage cheese. So that's the pancreas. Uh, let's take a, a, a let's follow. Um, these are all the loops of the remainder of the small intestine. These membranes that kind of hold the loops of the small intestine together are called the mesenteries. And that's why the blood vessels associated with the intestine are known as the mesenteric arteries and mesenteric veins. Mm. Uh, most of this is small intestine, but right here, this is the small intestine, and here it meets the large intestine. small meaning that it's narrower in uh, diameter and then it becomes this really large thick large intestine <clears throat> right where the uh, and the last segment of the small intestine is called the ileum and it connects with the cecum of the large intestine 
And right where it meets, there would be a sphincter, a valve, called the ileocecal sphincter, or a valve that controls the flow of chyme between the ileum of the small intestine and the cecum. The cat, the cecum of the cat, does not have an appendix. Cats don't have an appendix, but humans do, and it would be located right about here. Let's just see that on another cat. This is, a, this is another cat. Here, the mesentery membranes have been pulled off. This is the whole last section of the small intestine, the ileum. And we can see very clearly where the ileum unites with this clearly much larger intestine or colon. This first segment's called the cecum. The ileocecal valve or sphincter would be right here. And then the bottom part would be the rectum. We don't, in the cat, we don't talk about ascending and transverse and descending colon. It's a much shorter large intestine or colon. In fact, the intestine of a cat in digestive tract in general is simpler than that of us. And that's because cats are almost exclusively carnivores or meat eaters. And we are an omnivore. We are both a meat eater and a vegetable eater a plant eater. It takes a more complex digestive tract to digest plant matter, vegetable matter, than it does meat. That's why the animals with the most complicated digestive tract are cows. You may even heard, have heard that they have a four-chambered stomach because they only eat vegetable matter and it's much more difficult to digest. I think we're getting off track from a human <laughs> anatomy though. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's stop. Got it? Here's the liver. And on the underside of the liver is the gallbladder. It uh, is typically a green-colored sac, although on some cats it may appear brown. Uh, that's where bile is stored. Now, coming off that uh, gallbladder is a cystic bile duct. Coming off the liver is a common hepatic bile duct. Technically, right above, a little bit higher up, it's difficult to see, there's actually a separate left hepatic bile duct and a right hepatic bile duct that join together to form the common hepatic bile duct. The common hepatic bile duct unites with the cystic bile duct of the gallbladder forming the common bile duct which carries the bile to the duodenum. There is a sphincter right about here where the common bile duct meets the duodenum of the small intestine that sphincter is called the hepatopancreatic sphincter or sphincter of odi. It also controls the flow of pancreatic juice from the pancreas, but that's not visible here with the cats. Okay, let's... Uh, what I'm going to point out right now is the, called the hepatic portal circulation. The uh, hepatic portal vein, of course, carries the blood from the digestive tract directly to the liver because it's in the liver where the nutrients will be largely processed and stored in the liver. <clears throat> the uh, hepatic portal vein is actually shown in, on this specially injected cat in yellow. There are some cats that are said to be triple injected. They have not only the arteries in red and the veins in blue, but the hepatic portal circulation in yellow. And This is an example. Now, what forms the hepatic portal circulation are two major veins, which in this cat are in yellow. There is the superior mesenteric vein here that is bringing blood rich in digestive, uh, rich in nutrients from the small intestine. And it unites with a vein here from the spleen called the splenic vein. Together, they join together to form the hepatic portal vein which is right up here, that carries the blood from the digestive tract, the spleen and the intestine, to the liver, shown right here. <clears throat> um, th this, uh, th you have a similar diagram showing the superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein joining together to form the hepatic portal vein in my human anatomy lecture outline on page 014, the top diagram. So then you can go and check it out and see that that's what it is. Okay, let's stop. This is page 014. Here you can see the splenic or lenal vein. We'll just call it splenic from the spleen. Here's the superior mesenteric vein bringing blood from the intestine. They join together to form the hepatic portal vein right to the liver.